everyone and welcome back to the YouTube channel. We are working on a series of electrical videos for you. And if you've been watching along with the home improvements of my old house, I have already gone through the whole house and switched out the light fixtures in the ceiling. Today I am going through and working on the electrical outlets. These electrical outlets have been painted in place for years. Now this is a garage wall, and as you can see, it's been painted over so many times that the actual plug-ins have been painted over and clogged. So to use this outlet, everyone has been getting by using the top and using an adapter if they needed to use something with a three-prong. In a garage, that is not good. You need to have ground. It can be a wet environment occasionally. And we are going to swap this out with a brand new three-prong outlet. And we can do side wire or back wire with this. And we also have an addition on the side for ground wire if the box is not ground. Now let's talk about grounding for a second. In these old houses, they have these metal outlet boxes in the wall instead of plastic. And in most of these homes, the actual metal box itself has been grounded. So from what I understand, it means that your new outlet is going to be ground whether you run a jump wire to it or not. Now, as an added insurance, what a lot of people tell you to do, the professionals, is you use a electrical tester. It's got a red and a black little prong. It plugs right into here and it will light up if it is got a ground when the power is out. Now, if it's not ground, then it won't light up. Keeping in mind, power. The power has already been turned off in the house for this project. You want to be having absolute safety that this isn't being run off of a switch and somebody comes in and flicks the switch on you and you get electrocuted. So, we have the main breaker. We have switches room to room. You want to verify. A good way to verify with these outlets is to plug in a clock radio or a vacuum cleaner, a drill if you're out in the garage, anything you can. And these old screws are so rusty and corroded. This house was built in the 50s. And as you can see, this has never been updated. They're very shallow screws. And they're very full paint. Now a lot of times, when removing these electrical outlets, the professionals will just snip the wire right on the back. Now this is a real simple two-prong. It's not in the series. We've got space here, just like on the new one, for four wires. When your plugs are in a series, ideally this garage should have many more plugs than it does, you would be having four wires going to this outlet instead of two. So it can vary based on your application. Now these were really tight in there. Sometimes it's going to take a little extra oops, to get them out of there, but because you're working with electric, I don't recommend spraying it with something like PD Blaster or WD-40. So, keeping safety in mind, I'm not an electrician. Again, I am a homeowner doing a DIY update. We want to do it safely and we want to do it effectively and still be frugal. So we're going to dispose of this. I don't really want somebody else reusing it. I don't want to sell it on a garage sale. It's not worth anything. A 10 pack of these is roughly three and a half dollars. If you buy them individually, they're about a dollar and a half a piece. So it's good to get the multi-pack when you can. And you can get these in white, off-white. You can get them in almond. Just the best thing I can tell you is to match your wall plate you're going to put on the outside. You might want to match your walls. You don't want to put a yellow one against a white wall. So we went with white. Now, here's a trick for you to know. Black to brass, white to light. That means if you have silver screws, you're going to be hooking your white screw to that. 
The ground should always go down here on the bottom, inside of our box here. I'll show you an up close picture. We have a ground wire and that is telling us that this is ground. So if you wanted to, you could jump a wire from this right up to there. So I'm gonna just go ahead. This is the easy part, hooking up wires, generally. This copper wire is soft, but it can be a bugger to get around these screws sometimes. And if you need to, give yourself a little more exposed wire without creating a fire hazard. And make sure you use your wire strippers. I don't recommend the cutters that are in, I don't recommend the cutters that are here in your needle nose pliers. Now occasionally you'll open up a plug and it'll look like it has three wires going to it. And sometimes that's because it is jumping from an electric to the switch next to it. Like in the case that you might have um, an outlet and a switch right next to each other, then they're just connecting the power from one operation to the next. Now for an added safety feature, I want to stress safety to you out always. A tip that we learned is to take your electric tape and go around your screws, your connection screws, to help insulate against any danger of any sparking. I had actually started this project because I was getting ready to paint and when I was powering on um, a vacuum. It was actually on when I plugged it in and the whole box inside lit up with a spark. So good to have, real good to have those metal boxes in a house. So you just want to real carefully make sure those are pushed on in there. They're all wrapped up. Line up your screw holes. I try to get as much wire in the box as I can. And I'll tell you, you don't want to over tighten these screws. If you over tighten them, you're going to actually start to bow or bend the back side of your outlet. And that can be a bad thing. Now in this case, when the wall box is put in crooked, you have a little space here to straighten that out if you like because your faceplate is gonna mount into this hole and it doesn't really have a whole lot to do with its outside. So I'm gonna to try to make that level with the wall so it's not so obvious that it's crooked. And I like to just make them kind of finger tight. Don't over tighten them. So that is some DIY electrical work for you. I hope it helps you a lot. If you're a new homeowner, congratulations. If you're an old homeowner, what were you waiting for for so long to learn how to do this anyway? So thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.